Dark Knight versus Captain America Civil War. Which one is the comic book equivalent of The Godfather? So this topic kind of got started because I was like on this site and I was reading comments and somebody said that Civil War is pretty much the equivalent to The Godfather, pretty much. The thing about that, I would have to disagree completely just in general. And that's not a jab at Marvel or DC or whatever it may be. I'm not latching on as a fanboy. It's just me being biased uh, and right in the middle, just in general, right? So the thing about that saying is that The Godfather is a very high standard film. It's considered one of the greatest movies of all time, and that's just as simple as that. Now, saying Captain America Civil War is as the on the equivalent in their own type of genre as The Godfather is a very bold statement. To me personally, it's just not there. Uh, that's just me, just in general. As a comic book movie or based off a comic book film, The Dark Knight, I think, is the comic book equivalent to The Godfather, just in general. Because when you look at The Godfather, you got to realize what The Godfather is, right? The Godfather is a movie that everybody kind of holds a high stand for. For one of the greatest films of all time, people quote it constantly, people watch it year long, people love the cinematography, people love the script, the actors, everybody was on point in that movie. There was not really a weak link at all. When I look at Civil War, I don't necessarily see that. Now, we're going to be comparing the two, The Dark Knight and Civil War, and see exactly which one kind of seems more like The Godfather, just in general. And I'm not going to be biased on one side or the other. I'm going to look at this with a clear-cut head. Now, when you kind of look at the cinematography of The Godfather, you see that golden richness, and you'd be like, that is just a fantastic-looking film all the way through, and that's what I see. When I kind of look at Civil War, I look at it and be like, yes, that's some good cinematography, but overall, it's a very blandish and basic look at the film. But then when you look at The Dark Knight, there's a lot of interesting shots, whether it be blue, whatever it may be, and granted, they look like they're trying to rip on Michael Mann's heat. But overall, it's still a very visually stunning film compared to just a very bland and basic uh, look of Captain America Civil War. Now, overall, I think when you look at the two leads, just in general, because a hero has to be, you know, the top guy. So the leads, obviously, you have Brando or you have Pacino, whatever it may be. And then you have Christian Bale and you have uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans himself, I think, does a much better job than Christian Bale, just in general. I think the script allows uh, Chris Evans to actually do more and not necessarily be outshined by a couple of people. Because when you look at Christian Bale, he got outshined a lot by Heath as a Joker. He didn't even have enough time to even try to stand out. Now, granted, he didn't like The Dark Knight Rises, but that's a completely different video. We're talking about these two films, right? So I think Chris Evans does a much better job at managing to stay out um, of like the you know the shadow of the villain because that's mainly because, you know, the villain just isn't just good and at all, really. Whereas, as I said, Christian Bale just kind of had to be in, like, Ledger's shadow because he was just too good. Even with even if uh, Christian Bale phoned it in, the movie would still hold up quite well just with Heath Ledger's Joker. That's just that's how good he was, just in general. Now, when you kind of compare the villains, right? A hero can only be as good as a villain. So let's look at the villains. Crossbones, wasted. I don't give a shit what you say about Crossbones. They're, you can't defend this because his dialogue at the very beginning was shit. It just seemed like a very throwaway thing. He was equivalent to, um, you know, George St. Pierre and the Winter Soldier. He was kind of a throwaway thing, so that's nothing. Baron Zemo, I didn't hate him personally. I kind of, you know, grew on him a little bit more. You know, I kind of liked him a little bit more. But overall, I feel like his motivations, even though it had a whole bunch of coincidences, like well, how do you know, you know, Falcon was going to tell him, how was he going to tell Cap where he was, where it may be, so it, it didn't make too much sense. But overall, I think his plan was a little bit more smarter than I, his better performance, I guess. I didn't really care for his performance, and he just kind of felt a little bit unnecessary. Where you compare it to he Ledger Joker, obviously, as I said before, you really don't have to say too much about Joker because he's he is the movie. That's essentially what it is. Like I said, I will give the villain, to hands down, uh, the Dark Knight. And you can even compare Harvey Dent to Crossbones, whatever it may be. DC and The Dark Knight just kind of wins in that category. Where the hero, I think Chris Evans does a much better job than Christian Bale. Which his performance kind of got a little bit lower lower end as time went along. Now overall, you can kind of look at the acting. I think the acting and just the direction is much better in The Dark Knight just in general. But then you also look at it like this, right? The Godfather is very much quoted. Everybody quotes The Godfather from here and out. There's not really a particular line that I think I would actually probably say in real life, just in general. I don't think anybody's going to write it, quote it. The Godfather itself is a movie that everybody kind of holds, as I said, a high standard to the point where everyone knows a, at least one line, uh, one way or the other, from The Godfather. Uh, it, it has infected pop culture, whatever it may be. The Dark Knight did that. People quote it. I, why so serious? For the entire year. Merchandise, whatever it may be. You would die here or live long to see yourself become the villain. People know that shit. Uh, nobody really quotes, or maybe nobody will, like, it's not enough time, but nobody really has quoted, uh, Civil War yet. There's not really a good line that I can really remember much, whereas when I first time saw The Dark Knight, I was quoting that shit because there was really good lines in there. 
Uh, now, granted, both these movies actually do a really good job of trying to make a realistic world approach to the point where there's real world problems and try to ground it to the point where us, the the you know, the audience can actually relate to that shit just in general. Now, overall, when you kind of look at some of the uh, the balances or the pacing, The Dark Knight is a much better paced film. Watching it again, you realize that Civil War is a little bit too slow to the point where it just kind of drags a little bit. I feel like The Dark Knight never really dragged, and honestly, I had more twists and turns and unpredictable moments compared to Civil War, and Civil War had a lot of surprises, but it was more like surprise, you know, um, action scenes or something that happened with a character or whatever. It was not really a story twist, because if you were paying attention to the story, you clearly knew Tony Stark, spoiler alert, parents got killed by Bucky. It was pretty obvious as soon as they showed he hit the car, then he went to Tony Stark's hologram, which was just not needed just in general. I feel like even though uh, The Dark Knight, now we look at characters and just better people kind of put in their places, The Dark Knight also kind of wins that category because Civil War, even though they do a good enough job trying to balance all these characters and whatever it may be, technically, I still feel like Spider-Man did kind of just get plopped in there because he could have been taken out and nothing really would have changed much. Where I feel like everybody else in The Dark Knight, I feel like they served their purpose. Um, though the Rachel stuff, I could have got rid of whatever it may be, but it still served the purpose. Now, like I said, when you compare it to The Godfather, it's The Godfather, right? When countless awards, critically acclaimed. Now, granted, Civil War is critically acclaimed. Now, people go off Rotten Tomatoes, and if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. That's okay. The thing with Civil War succeeds better than Batman uh, or The Dark Knight, pretty much in general, it's a comic book movie. Now, depending on your definition of a comic book film, Civil War beats The Dark Knight by a fucking landslide. That's not even a fucking comparison, right? Because it embraced being what it's supposed to be, and that's a comic book movie adapted, or a comic book adapted to a movie where The Dark Knight is pretty much a film with some comic book, you know, references or stuff in there, and that's pretty much what it is. It's more of a film, just a regular drama action film, and less of a, almost a Batman film. Civil War made me feel like a kid. I didn't feel like a kid when I was, like, um, watching The Dark Knight. I felt in entertained. I felt uh, enthused. But I, I felt more, I guess, just, like, excited to watch it. Now, granted, like I said, both of these things are on two different playing grounds at the same time, but... Overall, it doesn't really matter what. I don't think either one of these films are on a par of The Godfather. They're just not. The Godfather is just on a different pedestal. But then again, these two movies are in a different type of genre just in general. Even from The Godfather. The Dark Knight is a different type of movie compared to Civil War. So when you see these comparison videos, whether they try to do Batman v Superman compared to Civil War, it doesn't really matter. This video essentially doesn't really matter too much either. I'm just kind of saying my opinion. But it just means that we, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if somebody says this thing is better or this thing is better in a comparison video because it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's your opinion. It doesn't. I don't care if somebody said this is praise, it's not praise. It's your opinion. Accept that. Don't accept somebody else's because they chose a winner. Uh, that's just as simple as that. Uh, now, overall, I think when you kind of look at the endings, though, like when let's compare the endings very quickly. The Dark Knight made me kind of want to get excited for more. Where Civil War's ending, I feel like it just kind of ended, and I was kind of not really. If it, if I didn't know what was coming next, I wouldn't really be that excited for what was coming afterwards. Uh, just in general, where the Dark Knight was supposed to be the ending, but I was actually still looking forward to more. So uh, that's my thoughts on what is more of the Godfather, the comic book film genre. If I had to compare the two, I'd probably give it to The Dark Knight because it's quotable. It infected pop culture, right? People love it, critically acclaimed. Um, and just in general, it's very highly regarded as the best comic book movie out there. But when you look at it, the essence of a comic book film, I think Civil War just beats it just in general. But as a film, The Dark Knight wins. As a comic book movie, Civil War is a better film. But that's my thoughts, that's my opinion. If you agree with anything, if you actually stay for this long-ass fucking video, then comment, subscribe, and like. And if you agree with what I say, then awesome, that's good. You can, bo you can love both people. Believe it or not, you can actually love both. Once again, I'm Chris Smith, and I'm signing out.